Hello everyone and welcome. This is Matt Genzulator East casting yet another game on behalf of the Collegiate Star League. Again, you can check us out at www.cstarleague.com. Uh, here today we are on Lost Temple to watch a very high level game between Case Seeker, playing as random, he ended up with Charon, uh, playing for University of Minnesota Twin Cities, and Ostagy, playing as Zerg for University of Western Ontario. Um, at this level of play, it's very odd to see a random player. I mean, statistically, they're very rare at this level. Um, most high-level players say, "All right, I want to pick a race. I want to stick to it. I want to learn everything like the back, like the back of my hand. I want to learn the build orders. I want to learn how to use all the units properly. I want to learn everything about this race." Uh, but K Seeker, nope. He's a random player, and he's also very good. Um, Right now this Overlord is trying to get vision, but uh, this SCV comes over and catches it, and as a result, both player knows the other's location. Um, so Case Seeker, he may, we may see him making a couple mistakes or something, uh, because he's not a Terran player, he isn't as familiar as a pure Terran player would be with the race. Uh, but however, on the other hand, um, as a random player, uh, he has the advantage of knowing what it's like to be playing a Zerg vs. Terran and knowing how Zergs will respond in a Zerg vs. Terran because he's been in that situation himself, obviously, as a random player. So he's going to have a much easier time predicting uh, what the Zerg player will do and when and uh, how he'll respond to certain situations, uh, which will help him out throughout the game, hopefully. Um, but uh, that that's one advantage of playing random. Um, we see this SCV, he's going to be looking around, he's going to be uh, trying to distract this drone, uh, keep the Zerg player on his feet, and meanwhile he has another SCV coming down here to build a proxy barracks, so it looks like we're definitely going to see some early pressure from these two barracks uh, on this Zerg player. Maybe he's going to, uh, maybe Kseer is going to try and take out this uh, natural expansion, or possibly just get some drone kills, whatever you can get. Uh, meanwhile, this SCV, he's still keeping that drone busy. Uh, he's completing his wall-off. Uh, a wall-off is very standard in Terran vs. Zerg. Um, we got a Reen. His first Reen is coming across the map. And he looks like he's going to be putting down a bunker right here. Uh, right at the natural. Uh, see what damage he can do. And unfortunately, this Reen is here. He's sitting back at the Zelnaga Tower. He should be up here helping out this SCV build this bunker so the SCV doesn't get deterred by drones like this. Um, if this Reen was up here, he could really help out this SCV quite a bit. In fact, uh, this bunker, it looks like it's not going to go down with these drones here. It's not going to work out. Uh, actually, whoa, it looks like the SCV is getting surrounded by drones, and the SCV just went down. Um, wow. Uh, if he had brought these marines up here and he had rallied them up here, he could have prevented them from prevented that from happen happening. Probably, maybe even get a drone kill. Uh, but since he didn't bring the marines along with that SCV, he lost. He had to cancel the bunker and he lost that SCV. Uh, right now, he's got the marines coming up to support the second SCV. Finally, he's targeting the hatchery. I don't know why. And ooh, it looks like he's getting surrounded a little bit. Uh, you do not want to get surrounded by melee units as a uh, turn player with marines. That is not good. Uh, it's really not a good sign. <laughs> um, and it looks like he's going to get pushed back as a result of that almost surround. And it looks like this, the SCB building this barracks, uh, this bunker rather, is uh, going to go down. Um, I don't see him getting this bunker up because he has... Uh, it's going to be a long walk for another SCV to come in and finish this bunker. Oh, and look at this. Um, he's going to still try and push and do some damage. Ooh, I do not like this at all. Not one bit. Um, right now, he's targeting uh, the the queen with these marines, while the zerglings just run up and uh, get right on him and do damage. Um, that's really difficult to watch as a turn player, because all these zerglings that are on him with full health, I mean... Right when these Zerglings came within range of the Marines, he should have shot them. He should have retreated. He should have shot. Should have retreated. He should have kited these Zerglings, getting as much damage on them as possible before they inevitably come within range of his Marines. Um, I I really think it's a serious mistake uh, to let these Zerglings get right on you and deal damage. 
Uh, and as a result, K Seeker's going to lose a lot of Marines that he really didn't have to lose, unfortunately. I, I mean, as a turn player, this is really difficult to watch because, I mean, when you're doing something like this and you're trying to push the Zerg player early and trying to uh, do some damage early on as much as possible, I mean, it, it's a really micro-intensive strategy to do a push like this. And if you can't dedicate the micro... Uh, to make it happen, I mean, you might as well not do it at all. It's going to set you very far behind in the game. Another thing that'll set you very far behind in the game is if you don't dedicate enough to this push. I mean, I I think K, K Seeker, if he was willing to dedicate the micro, it would have been very smart to take off five SCVs or something to help out this push. Uh, maybe get a bunch of drone kills uh, with the uh, with the SCVs tanking damage for the Marines, uh, so we could take down Zerglings. Uh, he could have done a ton of damage, and uh, because he didn't dedicate enough to this push, he's really going to be hurting. I mean, it looks like the Zerg player, he has Roaches on the field, he has some Lings, he still has his Queen, and a second Queen, he's producing more Roaches, he's got a ton of Zerglings. Uh, there's no way this attack is going to work, because all K-Seeker has producing are two barracks, and that's really not going to be able to make this attack work. And we look at units lost, I mean... He's really hurting. I mean, just those small little micro mistakes were enough to set him back a huge amount. And I think if he doesn't do anything uh, seriously risky to uh, make a comeback, I mean, he's out of the game almost. Uh, what he really needed to do was just micro properly. I mean, the little micro mistakes, they, they may lo look like, I mean, no big deal. I mean, he just lost a couple units, whatever. But I mean you're going to see this amplified later on in the game. The, the, these mistakes, they're just going to ma make him get a fall further and further behind the Zerg player. Um, right now we see the Zerg trying to push, but there's a bunker up, so I don't know if he's just going to walk up, see what he can do. Oh, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I think he just walked up and walked back down. Uh, not quite sure what that was. Uh, Ostagy, he's uh, screaming in chat. He says his computer is broken. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, but actually, Ostagy, he's going to be able to bring this Overlord up here to get some vision up the cliff and see if he can shoot up here. I know Dan will tell you that Roaches cannot shoot up, but they actually can. Uh, at least off cliffs, anyway. Um, these Marines with 5 range are going to try and micro these 4 uh, range Roaches, but it's really not going to work. It's very difficult to micro. Uh, it looks like these Roaches, there's just too many of them, and they're just going to keep doing damage to this command center. I do not think this command center will be healed. Uh, he just took out two SCVs with the Roaches, and the Marines just aren't enough. Um, he's just going to keep the pressure. Uh, this command center, this was horribly placed. Uh, K-Seeker knew there were Roaches out on the field. He could have thrown it down right here. That would have made a lot more sense, uh, so that it wouldn't be vulnerable. Uh, meanwhile, he's tacking up. He's got a starport going down with the reactor. Um, and Ostagy, he's got map control, he's got uh, K-Seeker confined to his base, so he knows K-Seeker isn't going anywhere. So he's going to decide and press his advantage by uh, going ahead and taking a third base and saturating up with drones pretty uh, heavily. Um, also, he's going for Spire Tech, which is nice. Um, meanwhile, Tyrant, I mean, he's doing all he can to get ahead, but I think he's doing a bit too much, actually. Uh, he's got three barracks, two factories, uh, well, I guess four barracks technically, two factories, and a starport with a uh, reactor. This is way too many producing buildings for one base. He does not have a second base, and it's not coming anytime soon. So the fact that he has three barracks, one with a tech lab, uh, two factories with tech labs, and a starport with a reactor is just way too much. See, he's not, he's not building out of uh, either of these factories. I mean... He's not building out of a barracks. He's not. He's only using half of the starport. I mean, it was a real mistake to build this many because he cannot produce out of all of these things off of one base. I mean, if you look at the factories, neither of them are building anything. I mean, he could have just ditched just the va this factory here and uh, instead made a siege tank with the money he had and a uh, marine and had some gas left over to do whatever. I mean, I think... It's a real mistake to make too many producing structures because the idea of efficiency in StarCraft II, the most basic 
uh, generalization of efficiency in StarCraft II is that you are trying to make as many units as possible from while using as few buildings as possible. And uh, K-Seeker is really not doing a good job of, of doing that. Um, meanwhile, the the Zerg player, he's just continuing to... Uh, he's making a second Baneling Nest. Uh, not sure what that is for. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but oh well. He's continuing to macro up, macro up pretty well. Uh, he's got some saturation going down in his third. But there's two Vikings here doing a little bit of harassment, which is great. But I don't think it'll be enough to take down this uh, base. I think the drones can just come out and surround and finish off these Vikings. Um, no, they're going to half-ass it and run away, it looks like. Um, uh, meanwhile, K-Seeker's got his second base up. He doesn't have any refineries, but he's putting up the turrets to deter these... Uh, Mutalisks, uh, which aren't quite here yet, but he knows they could be around if uh, the Zerg player had wanted them. Uh, so it's pretty smart for him to have those turrets up, but I mean, again, it was quite an investment to put up four turrets. Uh, he still doesn't have any refineries that is natural. Um, these Vikings, it looks like they got picked off by these Mutalisks, uh, and he's resaturating up his uh, third base. So Osage's really way ahead in macro. He's got a ton more units. These Mutalists, they're going to realize he can't touch this natural expansion here. They're going to back off. And at this point, uh, I mean, we have a, our turn player is just way far behind. He's got 37 SCVs compared to 67 drones. It's just uh, quite a deficit. And it's all because this huge difference here, if you look at the army sizes too, I mean, he's so 84 food compared to 155. Uh, this all comes back to that series of micro mistakes he made early on and the lack of dedication that he made to that original push. If he had dedicated to the, uh, enough resources and enough micro time to that push, I mean, he really could have done a heck of a lot more damage and really actually secured a lead if he had wanted to. But instead, he just fell farther and farther behind because of... Uh, that failed push attempt. And here it looks like the Zerg player is going to take the game. I mean, uh, K-Seeker has nothing to respond to this huge army Rota Flick. And it looks like those Banelings just popped and killed maybe eight or nine SCVs. Wow, that was very effective. Look at workers. I mean, it's 68 to 33. Uh, the second command center is pretty much dead. It's just flying away. Uh, he's only mining off one base, whereas the Zerg player is mining on three. Uh, very saturated. Uh, fourth is going down, and he's just going to move in, and it looks like this is a good game. Um, yep, GG, there you go. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I really hope you learned something from this and can take something away from it. Um, hopefully we will see you next time. Again, this is the CSL. You can find us at cstarleague.com. Thank you.